Module 4 describes how ethanol blended fuels are transported, as well as where the most likely vulnerabilities exist. Okay, Module 4, we're going to talk about transportation and transfer. The enabling objectives. One, to list common modes of transportation for ethanol blended fuels. Two, to describe the United Nations Department of Transportation, UNDOT, placards and markings that will allow responders to identify ethanol blended fuel transports. Three, to identify national resources available to provide product and mitigation information. And four, to discuss the likelihood and potential locations of incidents involving ethanol blended fuels. Methods of identifying and confirming presence in transport vehicles will also be discussed. Given that an increased percentage of all fuel transportation related incidents are likely to involve ethanol or ethanol blended fuels, it is essential that emergency responders be able to quickly and effectively identify their presence at the scene of an incident. It is important to recognize the proper placarding and marking of ethanol blended fuels. Proper identification of ethanol and ethanol blended fuels can ensure proper steps are taken so incidents are managed effectively. Starting at the fuel ethanol production facility in the upper right hand corner of the graphic, the three most common ethanol blends transported from an ethanol product facility is denature fuel ethanol with 2 to 5% hydrocarbon, like natural gasoline, ethanol flex fuels, and undenatured neat ethanol. There is a small quantity of ethanol that leaves a production facility undenatured as a beverage or industrial grade ethanol. The ultimate destination determines the mode of transport leaving a production facility. Denatured fuel ethanol is delivered to a liquid product terminal, an oil refinery, or directly to a retail fueling station. When shipping to a liquid products terminal or an oil refinery, transportation by rail is the most common. However, cargo tank transport may also be used for short shipping distances. Cargo tank transport is used to move product from liquid product terminals to retail fueling stations. Less often, cargo tank transports may be used for the product leaving an oil refinery to delivery to a retail fueling station. Ethanol and ethanol blended fuels are identified using DOT placards and markings. Ethanol blended fuels and gasoline are transported in various types of containers including cargo tank trucks, rail tank cars, freighter ships, barges, and pipelines. DOT has classified hazardous materials according to their primary hazard and has assigned standardized symbols to identify the classes. Materials are grouped by their major hazardous characteristics. However, many materials will have other hazards as well. Ethanol and ethanol blended fuels are in the flammable liquids category or DOT class 3 hazardous materials. Placards for flammable liquids have a red background with a white flame and a 3 at the bottom of them along with their corresponding identification number. The same placarding and marking protocols are used for highway and rail shipments. Responders are taught in a transportation incident to consult the emergency response guidebook. Based on a product's UNID number, the emergency response guidebook is going to give that responder valuable information on how to handle the incident until higher level people can be contacted. The Emergency Response Guidebook, which includes this placarding information, is used as a resource for responders when attending to an incident involving hazardous materials and dangerous goods. A safety data sheet will also provide key information and product characteristics. 
Rail tank cars and cargo tanks carrying ethanol blended fuels will generally be placarded with an identification 1203 flammable placard when transporting lower ethanol concentrations up to and including E10 blended fuels. Ethanol blends of E15 to E85 are included under the UNID number 3475 identification. The 3475 placard covers ethanol blends from E11 to E94. Denatured fuel ethanol E95 to E99 blends will be placarded with a UN1987 flammable placard. The 1170 placard is for undenatured NEAT ethanol. As a note, to responders, when consulting the Emergency Response Guidebook, a different guide will be reached for UN1203 unleaded gasoline with up to E10 than if you consult 3475, 1987, and UN1170. OSHA has adopted new hazardous chemical labeling requirements as a part of its recent revisions of the hazardous communication standard. 29 CFR 1910-1200, bringing it into an alignment with the United Nations Globally Harmonized System of Classification and Labeling of Chemicals, GHS. These implementations affect chemical manufacturers, importers, distributors, and employers. The U.S. Department of Transportation has not adopted global harmonization standards, so current DOT placard requirements for packaging and packages remain in effect. From an awareness standpoint, responders need to be aware that there is non-harmonized systems which may cause confusion as to the level of hazard a responder might be dealing with. The National Fire Protection Association, NFPA, 704 marking system is based on the 704 diamond and is the system used for identifying hazardous materials found within facilities. The NFPA 704 system uses colors, numbers, and special symbols to indicate the presence of hazardous materials. Each colored square indicates the type of hazard and the higher the number, 0 through 4, the greater the hazard. For example, the number 4 in the blue health square indicates that a very short exposure could cause death or major residual injury. See figures 4.4 in Participant Guide. Health is represented by the color blue. Flammability, red, instability, yellow, and special information is the white at the bottom. Ethanol is represented by a 2 in the blue health square, indicating slight to moderate irritation. It is also represented by a 0 for instability in the yellow area and a 3 for flammability in the red area indicating high flammability with ignition likely under most conditions. There is no commonly accepted special character that goes in the white section for ethanol, though one may be appropriate. Responders should be aware of areas or routes where shipments of ethanol and ethanol blended fuels routinely pass. Denatured fuel ethanol, E95 to E98, is one of the leading hazardous materials transported by rail. Unit train shipments containing 80 to 100 cars of denatured fuel ethanol are commonly seen on key rail routes leaving from the Midwest and carrying products to various populations and distribution centers throughout the country. To aid in the familiarization of commodity patterns, Railroads provide traffic flow information to bona fide emergency response agencies. The U.S. Department of Transportation Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration publishes a guidebook for conducting local hazardous material commodity flow studies. 
This guidebook is designed to support risk assessment, emergency response preparedness, resource allocation, and analysis of hazardous commodity flows across jurisdictions. Since both gasoline and ethanol blended fuels have very similar physical and chemical characteristics, they will be transported in the same general types of containers and tanks. The most prevalent style of transport of the blended fuels that emergency responders will encounter will be the MC-306 and Department of Transportation or DOT-406 style cargo tanks. See figures 4.5 and 4.6 in the participant guide. These cargo tanks are non-pressurized, come in a variety of sizes and configurations, and have a capacity up to 6,000 to 9,500 gallons, depending on regional factors. The cargo tank itself may also have up to seven compartments. To permit commodity identification, placards must be visible on both sides and both ends of a transport vehicle. The second most common mode of transport for ethanol leaving a production facility is a DOT-406 and MC-306 cargo tank. Ethanol transported in cargo tank trucks are placarded and marked in the same manner as all other hazardous materials. Other characteristics of the cargo tanks are pressure and vacuum relief devices. They are typically bottom-loaded and unloaded and equipped with a vapor recovery system. Safety devices on these cargo tank trucks consist of emergency shutoffs, breakaway valves for shear protection, pressure relief devices, as well as overfill and collision protection. Denatured fuel ethanol is transported safely by rail regularly. In the transportation of ethanol and ethanol blended fuels, various routes are utilized. Methods include rail to fixed facility, rail directly to cargo tank truck, and rail directly to pipeline. The most common mode of transportation for denatured fuel ethanol leaving a production facility is rail transport which is placarded with a UN 1987 flammable placard. Rail transportation of ethanol and ethanol blended fuels is used to move product to fixed facilities, truck transfer terminals, and pipeline facilities. Most of the ethanol transported by rail will be in general service DOT 111A 100W1 tank cars with no insulation or thermal protection. These tank cars have a capacity of approximately 30 to 34,000 gallons. Unlike cargo tanks, which contain multiple compartments, rail cars usually have only one compartment. New regulations for tank car construction were published in 2015. New tank cars constructed after October 1st of 2015 are required to meet Enhanced DOT Specification Number 117 Design or Performance Criteria. Existing tank cars, in order to carry ethanol, must be retrofitted in accordance with the DOT Prescribed Retrofit Design or Performance Standard. Safety enhancements for DOT Specification 117 tank car include full height head shields, tank shell thickness to be increased, thermal protection, a stronger gauge jacket, top fitting protection, and an enhanced bottom outlet design. Okay, transportation by rail. You might have heard the term unit train. A unit train is a train that consists of between 80 and 100 cars of all one commodity. So a unit train of ethanol will be a train that originates in one point, typically going to another point, and it's all one commodity. Shipping paperwork. Another United States Department of Transportation requirement is that no matter what mode of transportation we are operating in, 
they are required to have paperwork. So if it's a bill of lading for the trucking company or a consist for a train, we're going to have that information available to us on what the commodity is and the amount of commodity and an emergency response phone number to call in case we have a problem with that commodity. Shippers of hazardous materials via highway and rail must comply with U.S. Department of Transportation regulations to ensure that responders have an accurate description of transported hazardous materials. For both modes, the required shipping paper entries for ethanol-related products include the amount shipped, the identification number, the proper shipping name, the hazard class, and emergency contact name and phone number. For rail shipments, a hazmat response code, or HMRC, or hazmat STCC number will also be present and may aid researching response information. Remember that the contact number will provide 24-7 access to a person knowledgeable of the commodity and detailed information about the product. One of the most commonly seen response contacts is Chemtrek at 1-800-424-9300. For highway transport, shipping papers will be in the cab near the driver. Rail transport requires that a crew member be in possession of the shipping papers. This will usually be carried by the conductor or foreman. They can also be obtained from each railroad by contacting their emergency phone number. Rail tank cars are gonna be placarded and marked the same way they are in over the road vehicles. That is, they should have a placard on both ends and both sides. The cars will be equipped with pressure relief devices. They may or may not have a vacuum relief device that is used during offloading. They also typically will be loaded and loan loaded from the top or the bottom. The destination of denatured fuel ethanol determines what mode of transportation they're going to use. Leaving a production facility, by far the largest volume will go by rail. The second is then by truck and then by barge. Some amounts might be shipped by pipeline. Arriving at the storage terminal, the storage terminal with no access to rail will obviously receive their shipments by truck, barge, or pipeline. Cargo tanks can also be transloaded at a facility. The images show a cargo tank truck terminal loading rack and a rail transloading facility. If your responsibilities include rail tank car loading and unloading operations, suggestions for best practice are available from the Association of American Railroads program called Recommended Methods for the Safe Loading and Unloading of Non-Pressure or General Service and Pressure Tank Cars and Pamphlet 34. Both are included on your DVD. A good resource to assist in preparing for potential transportation related hazardous materials events is the Transportation Community Awareness and Emergency Response website known as TransCare. TransCare is a voluntary national outreach effort that focuses on assisting communities prepare for and respond to a possible hazardous material transportation incident. TransCare members consist of representatives from chemical manufacturing, transportation, distribution, emergency response agencies, and government agencies. There are a variety of sources from which an emergency responder can gather information about chemicals involved in spill or fire incidents. Among them are safety data sheets, SDS, DOT identification numbers and placards, NFPA 704 labeling system, and shipping papers. Denatured fuel ethanol, E95, E98, 
has become one of the leading hazardous materials transported by rail. Transportation of this fuel commonly occurs via highways as well.